you know, my favorite inking instrument is, uh, you know, the crow quill steel brush, you know, oh, yeah? that really is. But just like I have such a heavy hand, I just, I just murder the nibs. Boom, we are recording. How you doing, Jake? Good. Uh, sorry I missed last hey, week. Hey, no worries. I got the uh, I got the Rona, and I was out of action, and uh, I was sweating it out. How many days? But, how many, um, how many days did it put you down? It was like a good three days, but, um, you know, I, I started feeling bad, so you could count another half a day before that and another half a day after. But, you know, I didn't miss too much work. I uh, I missed, let me see, one, two, two, three days of work only because it was over a weekend. So I basically ate my weekend instead. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, feeling much better yeah. now. So uh, getting back into it. And, um, yeah, I when we do our uh, storyline update, I could really bring you forward um, as, as to what happened when we do that segment. Yeah. And and then when we do the other segments, uh, I could talk about the uh, the movie I watched last right. night. <laughs> and then uh, we could talk about just comic making in general if you want to make a different sure. segment too. So sure. I'm here for it all. How are I'm you doing? doing? good. Hey, I, I just wanted to t- share with you that I have fallen in love. Um. You fell yes, in love with these. The what did high you say? C oh, tech you, C. The pen you suggested. Oh, you got your hands on. Huh? You got your grubby hands yeah, on. Yeah, man. I uh I looked them up because I use my smallest pen is this one, which uh-huh. is the pilot G minus two. And it's a point three right. eight. And then they have a point two five. And this is exactly what I was looking for so thank you for the suggestion yeah, now the yeah now the, the the widths that they come in i think are 0. 0.3 0. 0.4 and 0. 0.5 is that what you found yeah they have a whole bunch or what what oh but, yeah but um yeah i mean you they come in colors you can buy oh, the yeah. whole color no, set. i just have I bought the whole color set but i think it's 0. 0.3 or 0. 0.4 and then they're I forget if there used to be a 0.5, which was like a thick one, but I might have been dreaming that. Right? So it's basically just 0.3 or 0.4. Uh, so which one do you have? It should say it on the t- it should 0.25. say it on the t- Wait. Wait, what? Yeah, that's where 0.25. I got it. What? Cuz I'm fine with I'm fine with the these. Cap? I mean, I'm going to once I kind of run low on these and I do a replenish, I'll get the same in um these. I mean, there was I think cuz they're made by um Pilot they just yeah, see but it says I, Pilot LH, you, Pilot Pen. Right, that the LH is like the uh, maybe the the European or the Asian um, version of it. Uh-huh. They, I, I know, I know. Years ago, when I looked this up, there there was like some kind of patent issue, and somebody somebody wrote that they couldn't be sold in the Western Hemisphere because of a patent issue. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess, you know, people are just selling on the internet. You could just buy whatever. Yeah, Amazon doesn't care. Right. That's where I found it. Or maybe they maybe they, maybe they worked it out. Yeah. Yeah, they're on Amazon now. Yeah, I, I remember years ago, because I bought, I bought a, a, a shit ton of these when I was in Tokyo. And, um, you know, I stocked up. So I have actually the the refills, which was a lot cheaper because, you know, the, the plastic handle is just, you know, a worthless piece of plastic. And then if you get the refills, once it runs out, you can just refill them. So that's it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. And then, of course, I got the whole the col- the whole colorful set, too, which is interesting, you know. And so I was doing like an etching style with uh, multicolored shading using the the color set but uh yeah aren't they great they these uh these are they're basically disposable rapidographs and rapidographs used to be 
uh, um, used to be a mess. The, you, there were these pens that you had to fill up with these cartridges and capsules and, and, and you had, you ended up getting ink everywhere. And then like, you know, if you got them working great, you know, great. I mean, they were professional drafting tools really, but if, if you got it working good, and then you just put it down for a day or two, and you come back. Then it would all get clogged up. Man, so you if you went to lunch the... and came back to, from lunch, the thing would be clogged. Right, especially the thin, the really, really fine ones. But but then it was like it was so tempting because the fine ones you could do all this incredible detailed work, right? Like the point two fives and the zero and the double zero and all that. So. um now we're in the age of disposable pens and uh you can just buy these refills and uh, it's much better so um you know if anybody works in black and white you might want to check out these pilot high tech c um available at a uh at an eastern hemisphere near you yeah, Amazon. yeah between rapidograph and uh airbrushing they drew that just drew i mean i think i spent majority of my time just cleaning and repairing um, yeah i know that what we had to go through well you know it's better than the cavemen they had to blow through a reed <laughs> so we're you know we're 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 ahead of them but uh not too much i don't think and yeah so 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 those are great you can't have enough of those things i have them everywhere the one thing i got to warn you about is do not drop them because if you drop it it's just going to be your luck that it falls right on the point and then it's going to be yeah. inoperable and you're going to be very yeah. sad. So don't drop those things. Okay. Right? If you drop it, put your foot in the way real quick. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so the, those are great. And you know, the, they're really good after you have like a page inked to just go yeah. over it, give it the once over and go in and do all of your like really light, tones you know your hatching tones and your etching tones and you know it has it has a very very thin point and very good control so there's a plug for a, uh, a great product and uh if um if pilot is listening and you want to sponsor yeah. us we're we're definitely open yep. to that just with free <laughs> pens if it comes down to that yeah I'll definitely. Definitely be using a ton of so what uh, yeah so, so that's good news. Um, for me, I'm just using on the pencil side here. I'm just using these little mechanical pencils. But I was I was having this problem where uh, the pens the point was getting like really wedge shaped, you know, and so it would have like a sharp side and a dull side, and so that was bumming me out. So I had to like come over to a scrap paper, and uh, and just like you know scratch 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 just just to, like like wear it down to get it flat again, but. Uh, these are the little complaints that artists have about our equipment. You know, I'm also really down on these, on this brand of comic book art board. Really, really down on it. I bought this, this is like 20 something bucks for Strathmore Bristol smooth lined pages, yeah. right? And you look, look, it has a comic on it. This is made for comics, right? <laughs> but then when you actually get into it, they printed these blue dots and these blue lines so dark that it's like really intrusive, you know, and I have tons of other brands that, that the blue line is very, very light and unobtrusive because as you can see, I'm like going right over here, you know, I'm going right to the trim yeah. line and you know, this is, this is probably not a good idea. I am going to, I am going to move this over so that it's a little bit in, but you know, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just avoiding the bleed area, but I am using, you know, at least half of the trim line. And so it's like, you're drawing over these blue dots everywhere and I'm about to lose my, I'm about to have a fit. So, uh, that's another Ted talk over right there, but, uh, yeah, these are the things, these are the, the things that get my OCD yeah. triggered. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, it is. And, it um, is yeah. when you're getting into the arts, you know, because we're dealing with comic books specifically, you go through a, a period of time which is completely based on um, 
buying one of everything at the art store and uh and giving it a shot and i still have a big yeah. old bin of of stuff you know i you know because i'll go to the art store for one thing that i needed a, a, a refill on and then just kind of wander around and then oh wow that looks kind of interesting maybe it'll make that kind of mark or it'll improve these kinds of marks or so on and so forth and then you take it home and it kind of works but you know you're so used to the other thing or you find a gem you know a jewel that just becomes a part of your uh, you know another technical you know my favorite inking instrument is uh you know the crow quill steel brush you know oh, yeah? that really is but just like i have such a heavy hand i just i just murder the nibs and um and i could because yeah. then they get too far apart they just start dropping blobs of ink so mm -hmm. i'll be going and going and going and go, oh yeah 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 and then that big old well there there again you can't you can't drop it nope. you can't bump it you know you you can't like have it in your hand when you get when you're reaching for your coffee and then you smash it against so yeah know, so these something. um these furioskes um fudenoskes uh that i saw these because actually i do a lot of my art supplying uh fulfillment not even through amazon but target and i saw these tombos i always love i've always used the big tombos uh -huh. these big double double tips right. um though these have a like yeah. a, these are water based i still got a transition trying yeah. to find one that's not but um they have this is a hard a hard tip and a soft tip and both of them make the same type of uh, uh marks that the i could get out of the uh the steel steel brush quill quills so yeah. i'm living like, yeah the, the well the steel points is steel points are cheap enough oh, yeah. though right they're they, you know, just buy just yeah. buy a, a crap ton of them i have i have a bunch at school and uh my students really abuse them so you know i just write them off but uh you know if you buy a box i think they come in a box at 12 yeah. it's only a dollar or two yeah so uh let's talk we talked a little tech talk a little tech keeping it up if you have uh suggestions yeah. for tools leave them in the comments be more than happy to well, check yeah, them out. When I when I was when I was inking, I, there was nothing I liked better than a Winsor and Newton brush series series seven seven yeah. I think it yeah. was. Yeah, and they were like, but when you buy them, you don't just go to the store and, and grab it. You gotta look at all the options and inspect each one to see the natural pointedness yeah. of it. And then and then get only the best one. It's like buying a green pepper, you know. You don't want to just like <laughs> blindly gra grab. You know, my wife yells at me whenever I do that. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, because some of them just have like a perfect point, and you know, and then they'll more likely to keep the perfect point uh, if you take care of this stupid thing. And um, you know, and so those are really good. I keep them like in a plastic tube. You know they come in a plastic tube ideally or else you can keep them in a plastic tube and uh you know the they they it fits into the base so that it never touches anything in inside the tube and you know they're really thin and they're really great you know and uh you know if they're they're not convenient if you just want to really pull something out and start drawing but you know you i i have uh india ink i have higgins india ink all over the place you know i actually buy it in bulk for school so i you get all the india ink i ever need and then try to transfer it into the little container without getting it all over your hands and your pants but uh you know that's again back to the uh you know the rapidograph days where you're just squ it's squirting on everything <laughs> <laughs> India ink is India ink is a wonderful thing, and uh, you know, and and it's good because it lasts a long time. It's really dark and it reproduces. And uh, God bless India ink. But yeah, you know, it's nice to have brush pens because you just uncap it and start drawing. You know, if the if the spirit moves you. 
and uh, you know it's definitely convenient. <clears throat> so we got a new uh, yeah. Segment. So we're working. You want to go to our new segment with the uh, sure. What's a what's our new we segment? We got the uh, comments. Is this? So we got our first oh, mailbag. Oh, yeah, mailbag. Do, 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 roll jingle. Um, yeah, we get mail. So in episode three, um, Phil Doe five thirty left a comment, which is cool storyline. Thank you. Nice art. Thank you. Uh, Y'all should narrate the story with graphical timeline and sell it on the blockchain. That would be cool. <laughs> so I did. I did thank Na him. Narrate the yeah. story um, with a graphical. Timeline. That's. Uh, I, I was interested to see what your um, your take on that was, and I'm assuming because you have a lot better uh, in depth knowledge of the uh, NFT and blockchain and and that fun stuff. Um, I'm assuming this would be something like NFTing like a Twitter or something. I mean, some kind of way to, right? Well, that's not that's not too different from webtoons if you think about it. If you're just scrolling down on a web page, right? um, you know the que the question is if you're if you're trying to monetize that, how do you monetize that? And you know you can you can join a webtoons site you know, where there's memberships yeah. and, or, or you could, uh, you know, do it as a, a Patreon where you, you know, you pay a monthly fee through them and you get access by a URL. You just, you know, plug in a URL, then you just look, look at it as much as you want. Um, I guess, you know, I guess they have to have a way of you preventing from just posting the URL for free to anybody else. But, you know, if you have a, uh, a password or if you have an ip thing um what are the other ways well you could do uh you know so so you could sell it as an nft and an nft can can have unlockable content you know which is again like a password or something you get access to a site um you know there there are plenty of these um nft businesses that just you know store images and uh they you know they could also store media and um you know it's, sometimes it's for a fee to the user sometimes it's by the traffic you know sometimes it's uh ad supported you know but there's all these methods of doing that i mean you know if you or i just said all right we're gonna sell turbo pit fighter issue number one um you know pay pay two you know pay three dollars by paypal and then you get a a google drive link you know, and you're just clicking on JPEGs, you know, so that's one way you could do it. Or you could make it into a video and then post it on YouTube as a private thing, you know, and you turn it into a video where it's like narrated. But the, the interesting thing about NFTs um, that I'm looking forward to in the not too distant future is these little page turner apps and they, Marvel's using them and DC is using them. On, on the VV platform, where you uh, you know you buy a digital copy of a comic, right? Like Daredevil One, I think I I, I put a bid on Daredevil One. I didn't get it, but uh, you know they they they've been selling all these like specific Marvel comics, and people buy them, you know, and uh, then you get a copy of it, and you hit the arrow and you go to the next page and then you go hit the arrow back and you go backwards and you zoom in, zoom out, you know, and, uh, and so it's just like a digital reader, but I'm not sure if that's what our Phil Doe person was talking about. You know, the, they're talking about a graphical timeline. So they were saying that you should explain the story in a graphical timeline. I think they mean like, uh, you know, bring the reader through like a continuity uh, you know, narrative, or or maybe I'm not understanding right, but but you know the 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 interesting thing about NFTs is, is every time I'm talking to people, uh, my question's the same. Yeah, can you I hear can. me? You, do you change something? Because you just got really loud. My uh, my one of my headphones died, so I'm oh. putting it in the charger. And okay. Putting, um, <clears throat> you can hear me now. Yep. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the, the thing about NFTs is you're you're selling a digital but basically it's like a TIFF file or or it could be JPEG. It could be very high res and you're selling somebody ownership of it and you could sell it as you know, you could sell it to one person, you could sell it to twenty people and they all have, you know, equal access to it. Um, or you could sell a comic with the page turning app, but then you're kind of like married to whatever the, that technology is, you know, there might be fees involved or something, or, or it could be a platform, you know, that you, that they want you to use. So it's like, Hey, you want the, the free page turner technology for your NFT? Well, you know, publish your NFTs here on, on our platform. Yep. And so that kind of, that kind of stuff is going on. I have those platforms bookmarked and you know and uh when we have our comic done we could very easily be doing something like that you know and and uh just be on their page turner technology so that the person's buying an nft which is a comic but then you're getting into the rarity question you know well what's to prevent somebody from just buying the printed comic on amazon or, or ebay and then uh, somebody scanning all the pages and putting it online, you know, so, you know, all of these things are happening. And, you know, the question is, how do you, how do you selling it? You know, is, are you selling the original art high res to an NFT collector because you're a big name comic book person? Are you selling a digital copy of a comic so that somebody could read it and collect it and sell it later just for more value? You know, it's the original 100 copies, you know, or is it a completely other format? And so we are going to be exploring all of these things when this comic is done. And we're also going to be putting these things in print. And I and we're going to have some form of webtoon. I will have to see which what, what that takes. But, you know, the, we'll have some form of webtoon and, um, you know, just try to reach your fans in all the different media. So uh, to the to the person you know who wrote uh, Phil Doe, you yeah, right right back yeah you know explain what you're what you're seeing you know I I sent Kurt a link to a uh, to an NFT um, comic uh, venture and I wasn't very impressed with it um, you know they they're basically like you know promising something so it's just you know vaporware at this point um but you know uh they say oh we're gonna have this great um storyline about the gods and the titans and uh once we sell a whole bunch of nfts we're going to hire an artist to make the comic you know and that's gonna take a while and so the whole thing just seemed like really just like you know all just promises yeah it looked like you could but, you uh, could actually it, whoever owns that IP could just turn around and um, like make a video game, like one of those app video games. Cause that's how it just really felt to me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I uh -huh. felt nothing in connection to it whatsoever. Um, even as it came to my appreciation for mythology and Greek gods and all that kind of fun stuff. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to comic NFTs, there's there's really nothing happening yet you know you can buy you can buy marvel or dc's digital comics but they had that whole universe already online where you just buy a membership and i think i think you buy a membership you get the entire library yes. right of of like you know of going back to 1964 yeah. and um you know you just you you pay a monthly fee for access and you just read comics online digitally you know so uh, it's not too different from that, except the fact that they're now, you know, NFTs. And I bought one, you know, just for giggles. I bought like, you know, I think I have like Spider-Man number 44 or something. And, uh, you know, I bought it on the aftermarket for like $35 or something. So I have that sitting in a digital wallet and... You know, chances are I will lose the password and, and access to the app before it becomes valuable or something. But who knows? In 10 years, maybe that comic I bought, you know, one of 30,000 others um, 
you know, maybe it'll be worth more like a regular comic, you know, and it'll live on the blockchain forever. So we'll see. That's what I was, that's said I was kind of like trying out. I mean, I know that people are buying and selling these things like crazy, but I'm not into all this like speculation. It, there, there's a whole thing for the VV app, V-E-V-E. And, um, you know, it isn't just Marvel and DC. It's also like all kinds of collectibles, you know, from like Transformers to, to like, uh, Snap, crackle, and pop. You know, you know every character is there in like in, in a three D avatar you can buy, and you know, and go crazy. But uh, you know, it's it, bottom line is it's very early still. You know, and these things are being developed. You know, and all the big companies, and Marvel's making a lot of money, but you know, it's just because everybody's buying this stuff up speculatively on the off chance that they that they accrue value. If not, it's just going to be a whole bunch of money that Marvel pocket. It's still there. I lost you. Lost your audio. There's no audio coming in. Did your earbuds blow. Jake. Jake, 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 I uh, lost you, lost you. Where'd you go? Technical difficulties. Wonderful world. You're back. What's going on? Oh, he's gone. It's all right. Don't panic. He'll be back. If you're, uh, if you've been watching us up to this point, which is episode 11, thank you because we have a ton of technical isms to figure out. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think it kind of adds to the charm of what we're trying to. Uh... Oh, here he is. Let me get him. Get him back in. Jake. Jake, I lost you. What happened? I don't know. I, I was just talking, and uh, and it told me uh, you might want to restart. <laughs> you might want to restart. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. It lost input or something, so. Yeah. Technology struggles continue. We'll we'll have to keep working on our technology. Yeah, no, I just thanked everybody who uh, who have made it this far because this is episode eleven, and uh, yeah, we're uh, figuring this out as we're going along, just like uh, people are with NFTs and their own comic right. books. And I mean, that's it yeah. is kind of one of the most exciting things about these times right now is there's just a lot of opportunities it's just where do you hang your hat and get to work um yeah a lot of formats you know a lot of formats yeah. for sure i mean yeah. i literally and... have been asked to do podcasting for six years now and immediately put it down to i don't want to be a personality i just want to draw comics um mm -hmm. illustrate and you know and everybody, oh man, this is a great opportunity. I, I'm not, I'm not dismissing the fact that this is a great opportunity, but it's an incredible amount of time and energy. And uh, mm -hmm. but what you and I have come up with, uh, and based on your suggestion, is why not just spend an hour together working on the comic, which right now is Turbo, um, and, and talk about yep. figuring this all out. And, and because yep. I think the, the part of it that's now even more interesting is um, everything that must come along with making a comic book or anything now. So it's podcasting and social media and blah, 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 blah. You know, it goes, it just feels like it, it, it goes on. And I know a lot of people, myself included, you get to a point where you're like, you know what, screw it. <laughs> I just, 
but yeah you find a couple of days later you know it all passes and then you go okay well let me let me try it this way you know which is more my way and then you know get on back on the horse and start fucking along yeah i mean there you know we say it every week there in in comics there's there's a lot of talk you know it reminds me of uh when uh i used to join my brother's softball team and uh you know it'd be it would be uh, a bunch of guys that get together and they play softball for like an hour or two and then they go to the bar yeah. and they talk about they talk about the game for like 5 hours <laughs> Remember when he dropped the ball? Remember when he picked the ball? Remember when he threw the ball? Remember? And they're just eating wings and and you know and drinking. So you know it's like that. You know you you either do it or you don't. Yeah. And uh, you know there there's people that are sitting. You know the 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 good thing about like modern technology is you could be sitting at a table doing your drawing. And concentrating and everything, and you could also be talking and uh, you know doing some some social gabbing, you know what we're doing here. So so that's the idea. It's just to use the time and put in the time, and then people could see the progress little by little every time. And we're talking about interesting things, you know, like uh, the latest, greatest, and uh, you know we're talking shop and getting stuff off the ground, and you know where we're at, but. Um, yeah, I, I do. I wanted to share, um, that I saw the Batman last night and, uh, boy, what a long movie that was. It was like three hours. So, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for people that might have not seen it, but, um, you know, I didn't realize when I sat down to watch it, the new Batman is Robert Pattinson. Yep. The, uh, Twilight Vampire. Twilight. Yeah, the Twilight Vampire guy. So he's like a little older now, and he's still got the smolder thing, you know, going. That's his big claim to fame. And um, you know, I I will say, um, you know, I like the aesthetics of it. You know, they were really capturing a very dark, grim Gotham City. You know, they had a definite visual style to to the whole thing. Um, you know, it, it was a little depressing, maybe. You know, and I think they're really just uh sitting on that formula that they have for the dark knight and you know and even the joker where you know it's like society but it's being held together by a string you know and things you know and and chaos you know and disorder is just you know one scene away at at all times right so uh you know and then you know antics ensued but uh I, I didn't mind it. My wife, at the end, she did. She didn't like it. But uh, I, you know, I, as a comic guy, I thought it was. You know, they delivered for the fans what the fan expected. You know, maybe maybe a little bit too formulaically compared to some of the previous Batman's. You know that we've seen. But uh, you know, that's that's the studio just being on the safe side because if they're doing this stuff like five years apart, they're just basically getting a new audience. You know, for the for the same content, you know, just kind of repurposing it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and the, uh, the big, the big villain in this one was the Riddler. Yeah. So they said like a whole new reinvention of the Riddler and a reinvention of the, of the, you know, Bruce Wayne story and the reinvention of commissioner Gordon and Gotham and all that, you know, and Catwoman. So yeah, people, people might like it. I did. I did. I'm actually mm -hmm. a um, a big Pattinson fan. I, he did uh, a, a movie with uh, Willem Dafoe called Lighthouse, and uh, okay. it, uh, it it's it's really well done. Worth seeing. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a psychological drama. It's about two guys locked in a a, a lighthouse um, that's out on a small okay. island, and so they've got to be there for I guess like a month or something, and so. There's a slow going crazy, but it had a um, real kind of like, um, uh, I say like cosmic horror, like HP Lovecraft, but it definitely aligned with that same kind of going mad uh, uh, 
Yeah. Sounds like a cabin fever type yeah, thing. But yeah, I don't, I'm definitely not going to ruin the ending because it was, uh, yeah. you know, but, but he, I, he really won it for me. I mean, it, I was going in nervous because here's the, here's somebody that's going up against one of the most seasoned actors. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and it was funny because okay, I was guy. watching a, uh, you know, one of those, um, uh, uh, when they talk about the movie, you know, on, on, on television stuff. And, uh, you know, Patson doesn't like doing, um, um, all, all the press. No, the, the, what do you call it? Like, a, um, a read throughs, you know, and the oh. Defoe is, you know, a theater guy. And so he loves right. doing all that. So he was just, he said, Oh, I was just, you know, I was going to be nice and see what happened. But man, you know, the energy that Patson brought was just, um, you know, on the money so okay so it could be really interesting i don't know how many um movies he's signed for i know he had a lot of uh, uh in interviews oh, for, the batman was, yeah, for batman how many um but he was extremely nervous about the fans um yeah but he was already yeah, well, they... a lot of like you know oh, this is gonna be great this is gonna be great and i think for yeah. his age um you know wrangling in uh you know, younger generation, um, uh, kind of smart thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're going to get the, you know, the, the, the swooning female audience that I think uh, they were going you know, that... for it though. I, I have to give them credit yeah. for that. I, 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 okay. I, I think that's something that's still, you know, it must frustrate the hell out of comic book people, you know, companies where they're like come on like why can't we you know why can't we get you know this this same age uh bracket but more female you know right and and it's because it's so doused with you know masculinity or uh, you know what you would deem that yeah um but we'll see yeah, no, well, you know they they are doing they are doing the female superheroes now, and you had uh, Zoe Kravitz in in the movie, and uh, you know I I think you know when when the Wonder Woman came out, and then Captain Marvel came out, and then uh, Black Widow came out, the uh, Marvel Marvel and DC saw you know that there's definitely potential here for selling to to women and. Uh, you know they they're they're definitely including it now you know i i don't know if there's going to be any more female marvel movies coming out i know that uh, there's a female thor in the in the new thor movie coming out love and rockets or something love and hammer hammer and tongs i forget what they call it but <laughs> yeah i can't remember oh love and thunder yeah maybe? that sounds familiar yeah and so there's going to be um a female thor and i think it's natalie portman yeah she's from the original was, she was his girlfriend on when he met when he got kicked off off asgard yeah um, she right. was the so, the female yeah, love so i think she, and, uh, right i think now good. she's graduated she was good in it she yeah. was one another person i was like really and then <laughs> i'm like well, wait a second <laughs> yeah all right I remember the third. I remember seeing the third Thor movie, and and uh, with Valkyrie in it, and uh, you know a strong female, and uh, and I remember thinking, you know, coming away thinking it was pretty good. It, it delivered, um, you know, and uh, it and it had uh, like all this stuff where you know the Asgardians get really messed up, and Thor loses his eye, and all this stuff, right? Um. But uh, you know now now they're on the the next one already, and uh, I think you know he's taken off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. So there's going to be some, you know, a, a tie in there, so they don't have to make the next Guardians of the Galaxy one. They're just they're just kind of like spinning off Thor into that franchise, and that'll have like Groot and. Uh, Gamora and Star Lord and Raccoon Guy and right yeah and uh, you know they're they're building on you know they're building and building and building you know on what they have 
they have these franchises and they're you know they're they're giving the people more and more of it until they i guess run out and until the actors get too old and then they have to do a reboot i guess that's you know what's happening well, i brought this up uh episodes ago where it'll be interesting to see how they migrate to let's say lower end and recognition actors if that actually is something that they try to do economically speaking um you but, mean for tv uh, uh no just for 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 the trying to make more and more movies or more you know more and more content Right. You know, because the magic should be, you know, the the character as it stands and then the where it's where the character comes from, you know, and let's say the Marvel Universe um, historically in the canon. Uh, and mm-hmm. then, um, you know, who's done what, um, you know, actors and actresses for that. And then somebody of a lesser newer start gets to just like uh comic books um you know a new creative team a new writer yeah a new a new penciler a new anchor you know a new colorist you know all these things that uh you know have always been a challenge for comic books i think could be if you learn from history you know advantageous uh for the movie content Disney makers. Yep. The, the Disney money making machine. But, uh, you know, they do, they do a hell of a job of um, monetizing their properties and keeping, keeping the ball rolling, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not all bad. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not all bad. You know, there, there, I know there's plenty of people that are just fed up with Marvel movies at this point, but, um, you know they're they're still profitable and you know what what i heard i heard an interesting stat there was a marvel movie um that you know cost 250 million to make and it made uh like 350 million so like 100 million dollars profit that was considered a flop hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. So you know that because like it it was like the opportunity cost is like wow we're we're supposed to be making you know half a billion on on all of our you know movies so that was like you know considered a flop and uh, you know I don't know some of these movies they seem like they go pretty far under the radar like you know Venom two I don't know five people that saw it you know yeah and um you know but those are those are coming out you hey know? Jake and, I lost uh, your camera. Uh oh, I'm a. Oh, I lost my camera. Oh, because I got the low battery warning. Let me. Oh boy. Well, we are coming me, up uh, on the 45 look. minute mark, so. Um, oh geez, okay. Well. So what do you what, um, what do you got? Well, yeah. Do you um? Up, oh, you're back. Again, set your power yeah, that, low that, power battery move. Yeah, that was just a little warning screen. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this. <coughs> Sorry. Um. This is a great book, and this is what really inspires me. The Secret History of Marvel Comics. And I talked to you a little bit about, uh, you know, Martin Goodman, yeah. the guy that started it all. But um, watch as I flip through the... Let me let me uh, raise this up a little bit. But watch as I flip through these pages. And, you know, I told you, like, basically, you know, this was a, 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 a newsstand you know, junk producer. And he used to put all these things out, right? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like give you the quick visual. And it's just cover after cover after cover on how these things started out in the 19, the late 1920s, all the way through the 30s, all the way through the 40s, just pumping out these books that are all very similar, you know, in genre. Yeah, pulps, right? Very, very formulaic, very, very systematized. And, you know, it's hysterical to read, uh, you know, how they exploit the writers, how it's all basically just ripping themselves off. It's just the same story and they recycle it. And 
you know they even got you know uh, they even got fined you know by the feds for for like you know false promises and you know recycling stuff under a different name but but look how we're going through the decades here and it's really just like it's all about these covers and these primary colors right and it's all just about putting stuff out right here you can see they put this one out and then they put this other one out you know and and it's basically the same thing with a different background and how it just went along like this and you know all of these like cliffhangers and all of these like you know like every gimmick known to man you know until you get to here marvel comics number one this is the human torch so now we're, we're starting into the superhero era but you know the thing that really inspires me about just look how much stuff they crank out right they don't care about they don't care about a good story. They don't care about art or anything, right? They just want a title and they want to get it out there, right? And, and it's basically a cover, right? And some of the stuff was pretty shocking before they got into the, uh, you know, the recalls and the, um, you know, the hearings and the all code. that. code, yeah. Yep, the comics code, right. And uh, Well, Fred it Jackson wasn't Frederick. only comics. It was also in movies. There were, um, uh, um, you know, crossing the line i think it's 43 um is where there's a a, a huge crackdown on you know uh obscenity yeah. is really i think what yeah well, they were they were definitely they were definitely pushing it right they you had a lot of like semi-nude stuff and bonded stuff well, and, it was also what the how know. they were using language you know and the uh euphemisms of of uh of uh, getting together and and such so yeah, and they and they had these painters that were just painting these covers. These were this was where all the value one. was. Oh, I love that cover. Yeah, all the value Ugh. was in the painted covers, and then everything else was just like cranked out. And you know, the cheapest thing. Oh, this this is where I'm up to. But um, you know, so that's what really just inspires me about about just like you know the way that that Martin Goodman just put out product and it just like just relentless schedule. You know, just it just keeps coming out, just churning and churning and churning and churning. Well, and then... to bust in there, you know, it, 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 just to interrupt, you know, it, it it's about the business. That's what he was about. He saw opportunity upon opportunity, and it just so happened to end up being Marvel Comics. Well, that was because of there was Stan never Lee a point where and total I, and, and Jack Kirby. Well, that yeah. was a total fluke because yeah. because Stan and Jack happened to be there. I mean, all the other yeah. comics were pretty forgettable, you know, from those eras. Um, you know, un, until uh, Superman, you know, maybe maybe Superman and Batman, you know, but uh, you know, all the all that other Golden Age stuff, it just kind of like was just you know momentary fluff and and. And then Marvel made something lasting, and and the competition really made DC better. And then they were trading creators back and forth, and it became a whole, you know, like a ecosystem of of these guys. Um, you know, and and the customer was was the winner, right? And you know, the comics were cheap; they were like twelve cents, or you know, or a quarter, you know, maybe later on, and and and. Uh, you know, you had, and you started to see the, the, the art form really, you know, really take off, right? And, you know, until, until you get to where we are today, where, you know, maybe we're like in a creative, uh, you know, rut right now. And, they're, you know, they're looking for the know. next big thing. Uh, we actually, yeah. Um, what's your uh, battery life like? Are you going to, are you, are you going to be out of commission? I, I, I plugged in. Oh, okay. All right. Well, why don't we jump but over? I, but why don't I, we jump over and do a uh, part two? Yeah, we can go over the part two. We can go over the storyline because yeah, I have yeah. to update you. On, I have a lot, a big, big update mm -hmm. on the story, and we'll and we'll talk about the pages that we're working on, and we'll bring people up to date. Cool. So, cool. It, so right. yeah, so yeah, go ahead. All right, everybody. Thank you. We upload every Sunday at eleven a.m. Eastern, and. Uh, make and leave comments ask questions and uh we'll see you next week mm -hmm. all right tune in